Hillsong. I mean, Hillsong was around since the early 90s in Australia, but they didn't truly break up until their 1996 album, Shout to the Lord, which was really a remake of their best songs. What set them apart were a few things. You were listening to real, live worship. Yeah, Vineyard had live worship, but they just took their studio songs and put it on stage, so the only thing different was that their voices didn't blend perfectly. But Hillsong had a more real sound. Not always, but it was enough. It was real worship instead of performance. At the height of the popularity of reality TV, for the first time, we had reality worship. And secondly, Darlene Jack was part of the growing trend of celebrity worship music, which included Matt Redman with his heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. and Tim Hughes with his Here I Am to Worship. And the most important reason Hillsong got noticed, the songs were good, with songs like Jesus Lover of My Soul, The Power of Your Love, This Kingdom, and of course, Shout to the Lord. There's a Hillsong movie coming out, so I don't have to go through their history. In the late 90s, the Hillsong youth band formed their own group and came out with hits every year. They are Hillsong United, hitting the scene with songs like Every Day, Best Friend. But they're not well known until two years later. Around the same time, David Crowder comes into the scene with a remake of Make a Joyful Noise of the Lord. But he doesn't really make a mark until 2002 with Undignified, Our Love is Loud, Obsession, and You Alone. In the year 2000, Delirious makes another mark with Paul Belosh enters the scene with Hosanna, Open the Eyes of My Heart, and God of Wonders, later made popular by Third Day. God of Wonders beyond our galaxy, be our home. Oh, Michael W. Smith, in a surprise crossover from contemporary Christian music to secular music and then back to Christian, he crossed over to his first worship album in 2001. He gave praise music a more mainstream sound, and yeah, he would know about that. Around the same time, another evolution takes place in 2001, when Sonic Blood does a tremendously successful remake of then current worship songs. That brings praise music to the forefront of contemporary Christian music, not just church music. This opened the door for Chris Tomlin's Forever, The Wonderful Cross, Be Glorified, and This Is Our God. And Matt Redman comes back with At this point in history, the Passion Conferences bring many of these worship leaders together.
there was still no way to unseat the king, the powerhouse, Hillsong. Jesus Culture comes into the scene in 2006 2006 is another turning point in the evolution of praise music. The Dove Awards, which mostly celebrates Christian pop music, in 2006, Chris Tomlin's How Great Is Our God wins Song of the Year, and Chris Tomlin wins Vocalist of the Year for the next three years. Not only does praise music get included in Christian radio, it tops the charts. If there's a moral to the story, it's this, Psalm 96.1. Sing to the Lord a new song. Not because the old songs are bad, but because each generation of God's people want to express their worship to God in the culture of their own music, not their parents' music. So each generation needs their own song to sing to the Lord a new song. How many songs did you recognize?
It took my staff way too much time to finish this video, so thanks a lot for watching Evolution of Praise Music. And if you want more videos like this, subscribe below. And let us know if you have specific questions you want answered on this site. Your comfort and healing The hope that I'm needing Your love is all of